In this morning's Celtic FC news, we talk about Juranovic, we talk about Ida Gucci, we talk about a brand new Celtic signing, we talk about Ange Postacoglu has given an injury update on a Celtic player, and a Sevco player just can't stop talking about Celtic, even though they've got a game this week before the players, they just keep talking about us. It's all about us with that lot over the road. And then also we go into the comment section and see what you're saying on Christmas Eve and yesterday about the Celtic FC news on the channel. So let's dive into the video. The first thing that we want to talk about is Yoko Tsuki Aidaguchi. What's happened to that lad? You know, he was, he was one of the better players when he first came over and he got that terrible, terrible injury and he's basically fell away off the radar. There is talks about him, he might leave this this window, there's talks about him going back to Japan, but I mean, what is really, something seriously wrong with that, that lad and the fact that he's not even getting, he's not even getting the bench now. You know, that's how far he's fell down the pecking order, as they say. He's got Cal McGregor, Rio Hattie, Matt O'Reilly, Moy Turnbull, who's suspended for two games, even how he is in front of him. Talking about players that are coming back, Juranovic comes back and he starts back training tomorrow. Um, he's obviously had his break, he's had his week off after the World Cup, he's had a fantastic World Cup. I doubt he will come back right into the team due to the fact that Aaron's likes to give players a fitness test when they first come back as well. He might come back into the team, we don't know, it depends how fit he is. He was injured. Uh, for the third place playoff game against Morocco and uh, so it's just to see the extent of that injury they thought he would come back but with Anthony Ralston going off injured um, mid last midweek you know what is what is the state of play will Juranovic come back in I fully expect Juranovic to play for the zombie game we'll talk about the zombie game in a couple of minutes um, because it's all about them it's all about us with them. They just can't stop talking about us. But we've got other things to talk about first. So the Celtic FC breaking news of the day is Celtic have reported a, f a fee of £828,000 on a loan deal with an option to buy for a Japan def defensive midfield player that's due to sign on January the 1st. So Tomoyoki Iwata. Get that in there, song lads. <laughs> ah, that'll be a cracker. Hey, he's due to be uh, the next signing that is coming to Celtic. Um, Celtic boss Poster Coglu dropped further hints after Saturday's game that he was waiting to see what Santa brings. It's understood that his work permit is in place. He does have the work permit already, which means that Celtic have always been working on this one for a while. As per normal, they wouldn't say anything in public. I've got a funny feeling that they will announce it before we play the Sevco, just to get the fans buoyed up. And it is a loan deal with an option to buy, which is interesting. I think he's going down the road now where if he's not too sure about a player long term, he will get them on loan. Now, like say, Abel Gard, who um, hasn't kicked a ball this year, um, surely he has to go back because he's never kicked a ball for us and there's no use having a player on loan at Celtic if he's not going to get a game. So we've had... Kobayashi brought in from Japan, we've had the international Canadian Alistair Johnston who will make the Sevco game out of these players. I think there could be a few surprises for that game. It's actually a good shout that Alistair Johnston might make that game before Juranovic. That would be a shock. Um, and I'm going to tell you why, and one reason why is because he's been training with the lads for the last couple of weeks. and. He'll be, he'll be up to speed as where well. Juranovic has had that week off. He had a little niggle of an injury. And I just think that Alistair Johnson might be better placed to come in and make a surprise for that game. So what else can I tell you about the Japan midfield player that Celtic have brokered that loan deal for? And they can sign him for one million in the summer. For selling for buy him for they can buy him, sorry, for one million in the summer, according to a Japanese outlet. So Poster Coglu talking about Anthony Ralston the other day says we'll see with Ralston. He's improved on Friday. Uh, the reports are he improved on Saturday. 
There is two days before the Hibs game, so we'll give him every chance. We know, we know what Tony is like. He'll give himself every chance to play in that game. Players that want to play for the club will do anything to make sure that they're on the pitch, and Tony Ralston definitely comes into that equation. Juranovic will come back, as we said, but with more than a month away at the World Cup, it's going to come down to Ralston and who have, uh, might even be Hatati again. Hatati, we need to talk about him. We've not talked about him. So what a cracking game he had playing in that number two position. But the Hibs game will take care of itself as of the Sevco have another game before they play us. But when you think about it, John Lumsden of Sevco says that Cel the focus of the Celtic gap isn't the mindset of Sevco team. Right, they've got a game this week, but all they're talking about is us. They're talking about us, they're talking about the Derby game coming up, they're talking about the fact that three wins from opening up, three wins from three games, and they think they're back in a title race. Yeah, okay, lads. Calm down. You're going to get your totties on New Year's Day, as they say. Anyway... Let's jump over to the... Oh, and by the way, Merry Christmas. We'll jump over to Merry Christmas. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas. We were down the beach on Christmas Day just to rub it in. But that's the thing. It's just easy to do. So, talking about comment section. Gara, he says... We're talking about the St. Johnson game and we were talking about the score. He went for 3-0 hoops. And he says, have a Merry Christmas to all Celtic fans and please don't stop enjoying yourself. Johnny boy... He says, we're talking about the press conference that the, the Celtic put out before the St. Johnson game, the fact that it was only three minutes. Johnny Boy says, I, I noticed the pre-match presser for St. Johnson was basically three minutes cut from Wednesday's post-matcher, which is true. But Ange basically just went to the press, I think. He's like, oh, not, I'm not really going to speak to you. You're just going to talk about VAR. You're just going to keep talking about VAR. And he is of the opinion now that he's just going to stop talking about it. Liz Opt 560 says, I agree with, with Big Ange. The team has to up its game. We've been lucky so far and not dropped points. Not dropped any points, but let's have to be fair. We absolutely annihilated St. Johnson the other night. Um, that was really good to see. Um, Stuart Dixon says, Celtic need to up the ante in front of goals, get all the players to take dips and hopefully get out the and get the points. Happy Christmas to all Celtic fans. Says Tommy Boy, Donny Boy, previous games have been close, so it's only a matter of time. Um, a dominant display, but he went for 2 now, so he was wrong as well. I think we were all wrong with the scoreline, to be honest. What about the sending off? Now, VAR again, there's only been one decision since we VAR came about that um, this went for us. I just don't know what to say about it. I'm fed up talking about it, to be fair. Anyway, it was a sending off. He got yellow carded for it. It should have been end off. But then the VAR folk turned around and said, no, nah, we're going to look at that as a red card. We need to do as much damage to Celtic as we can. And they sent him off with a red card. To be fair, it should have been a red card because his foot was high. When you hit a, a keeper in the face like that, you should be an automatic red, to be fair. So we have nothing really to moan about. Donnyboy also says 17 million for a badder. 17 million for a badder. I think we should get a bit more than that. It says the, the bid will go up. For the time somebody answers the phone, the bid will be up another 5 million. And then good support for the Green Brigade after the other video. Apart from Hail 551, no time for the Green Brigade personally. Just my opinion. I pay my season book and they won't instruct me what to do as a Celtic fan. I don't think the, the Green Brigade actually instruct anybody what to do as a Celtic fan. That's for sure. Um, but I bet you're still joining with all the songs, just in my opinion. But um, I've still got a season ticket there, but I don't sadly use it. Somebody else uses it. So it's still put in full use every week. And on that note, I hope you've had an absolutely fantastic Christmas. What do you think the Hibs score will be? We'll do a Hibs video tomorrow. We're back earlier in the morning tomorrow with the Celtic FC News video. And then we'll look forward to New Year and a hunt scalping. And I'm going to put the video up again up here at the end for the hunt scalping. If you want to see a nice bit of hunt scalping score lines, check out that video and I shall see you in the next video. 
have a great day Celtic fans all around the world.